Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Cormandy from the YouTube channel My Air Gun Reviews and today we're looking at Crossman's newest multi-pump air rifle. This is the Crossman Legacy 1000. It's an inexpensive rifle. It sells uh, the highest prices from Crossman at $65.95. I've seen it at $59.99 and $49.99 or just the gun at some of the air gun sites. And as low as $44.84 uh, including the scope and a pair of uh, safety glasses on both uh, Amazon.com and Walmart.com. So uh, that is not a bad price. Uh, the gun is uh, a multi-pump. Uh, it's a little bit of break from the traditional multi pumps that are three to ten pumps. This one will actually handle twelve pumps. Uh, they have a new improved valve that handles the higher pressure, and this gun is rated at one thousand feet per second shooting alloy pellets. It's rated at eight hundred feet per second shooting steel BBs, and it's rated at seven hundred and fifty feet per second shooting uh, lead pellets. Uh, the gun weighs 4.8 pounds. It's 39 and 3 quarter inches long. It has a 20.84 inch barrel. It has a 17 round magazine. Uh, it has a reservoir that holds 200 BBs and it uh, is also a single shot pellet rifle. Uh, it comes equipped with fiber optic front sights up front and it's got a uh, steel rear sight with the uh, ramp blade uh, for elevation and a screw right here so you can move it side to side for windage. Uh, the scope is a 4 power by 15 millimeter scope. It is really not a very good scope, but for somebody like me that requires uh, glasses and I have uh, farsighted and astigmatism so I can't see the open sights very well, I was able to get by with the scope. Uh, I shot at actually 11 yards for this uh, review and uh, uh, the 15 millimeter scope does not let in very much light. I had all the lights on the target that I could get and it was still pretty dim. But I was able to uh, get sighted in well enough where I could get some pretty good shots off. And if you're shooting a squirrel at, or a bird at 10 or 12 yards, uh, you'll be able to acquire it and uh, get a shot off with it. It's uh, really not much of a scope, but it does work. They claim it at 10 pounds of uh, muzzle energy and uh, this gun actually did uh, get very very close to that 10 foot pounds muzzle energy. Uh, for starters let's uh, take a close up look at this gun. Okay here you can see your fiber optic front sight. It's a blued steel barrel. It has a composite or plastic uh, cocking arm. Here you can see your stepped ramp for your elevation and uh, this is the screw that uh, you can loosen to move it side to side for your windage. Now, breaking apart from tradition with the Crossman 760 and the 2100 and the 2200 Magnum which all have uh, cast metal uh, receivers. This one has a plastic receiver and plastic trigger guard. It still does have the metal trigger. Uh, somewhere I was saying that it was two stage adjustable but this is just a single stage trigger. And the rest of the stock is uh, plastic or composite. And here on the right side of the gun is where you load your pellet. You pull the bolt back and insert your pellet and this is a little bit rough in here I've noticed that you know the bolt will slide back and forth uh, smoothly 
but when you get a pellet in there it's jerk 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 and uh, the pellet is catching on something in there and I think it might be shaving the edge of the pellets just a little bit and causing a few of them to fly off and then and now also breaking with tradition from the 760 and the 2100 and 2200 and when you raise the cocking arm the 2100 and 2200s they have a felt oiling ring right here where you put your oil and that keeps your uh, compression tube lubed uh, and here's your pump cup on this one you just put a little bit of silicone chamber lube in by the pump cup uh, there's just a little gap right in there where you can get it in there and all the other 2100 and 2200 760 they recommend pelgun oil but not on this one they recommend uh, silicone chamber lube I think that because of the extra pressure you're putting into this uh, new valve that they're afraid of detonation because pelgun oil is combustible And when you're shooting with steel BBs, the uh, steel BBs can really ricochet, so it's nice that they did include the safety glasses uh, with it. It's, uh, they're, they're cheap, but you know they will protect your eyes. I think that should be a must with all of your BB guns. Now for the uh, performance numbers. Uh, the gun is rated at 800 feet per second shooting steel BBs and when I first shot it uh, I wasn't even coming close and I had a big variation of almost 120 feet per second I did put, put a little bit of lube in on for the pump cup and shot it a few times and uh, with the steel BBs it was still erratic but uh, raised the speed from 720 feet per second up to 803.5 feet per second. So it did actually exceed the 800 feet per second they claim with BBs. Uh, that's much better than they used to have one called the MK177 which claimed 800 feet per second with BBs that didn't even come close. This one at 12 pumps will exceed 800 feet per second. Now they claimed 1,000 feet per second shooting alloy pellets. I do not know what alloy pellets they were shooting, but I was using the RWS Hypermax 5.2 grain. And shooting those, we got a low of 839.2 feet per second, a high of 846.5 feet per second, an average of 843.7 feet per second. That is only a 7.22 foot per second extreme spread with a standard deviation of 2.64. Uh, that one generated 8.22 foot pounds of muzzle energy. A little bit below their claim. But, shooting the lead pellets, I've started out shooting RWS Super H points, which are 6.9 grain, and I had gotten up to... Uh, 794.7 feet per second but I was still getting a large extreme spread now shooting the standard RWS hobby 7 grain this thing got a low of 789.1 a high of 799.0 an average of 794.8 feet per second and that generated the fastest shot 9.93 foot-pounds muzzle energy pretty much right at Crossman's claim it uh, greatly exceeded their 750 feet per second claim with the lead pellets so even though it was a little shy with the uh, alloy pellets it was spot on the money with the uh, BBs and it was well above their claim foot per second average with the uh, lead pellets so I am impressed and, and this is a gun that uh, you know 45 bucks uh, you know what can you say about that 
I'm assuming uh, this one has the same characteristics where you want to put one pump of air into it before you park it, which will keep your pump cup expanded so it seals tightly next time you pump it up. And uh, it, I found it was just a little bit tough pumping it 12 times every time. Uh, if you use it to shoot uh, target practice and go for 12 pumps, you're going to wear yourself out. But uh, shooting five pumps or sometimes six pumps, uh, it was relatively easy and relatively consistent with uh, shooting the lead pellets. I did not shoot any rounded pellets, which I probably should have. But uh, the wad cutters seem to catch every time I close the, uh, the bolt. And uh, I think they were shaving it and caused some, some of those pellets to fly off target. But uh, I did my accuracy test using uh, Crossman Competition 7.4 grain pellets. Uh, they are uh, a cheap pellet, easy to acquire. and. Uh, it's more like what somebody is going to uh, shoot through this. They're either going to shoot that or the Crossman uh, pointed pellets, which are also easy to acquire and about the same weight. So why don't we take a look at the accuracy test for this gun and uh, then we'll go from there. Well, first four pellets are going to be covered with my finger, and then there's that last one that uh, had to fly right. Overall, pretty accurate gun, considering uh, it is such a weak scope. Now, as you can see, I got uh, four pellets uh, really nice and tight, and one kind of flew off, and I'm pretty sure that was just a pellet that got gouged when I closed the bolt and uh, it's probably not going to do that as much shooting the pointed pellets or a rounded pellet like the Crossman Premier Hollow Points. Uh, it, uh, that was 11 yards for this uh, target shoot and you know this is a gun that you're probably going to mostly shoot within 10 yards and I was able to acquire the target uh, through this uh, very 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 inexpensive scope but like I said the scope did the job and I would have no problem sighting in on the head of a squirrel at 10 yards and uh, putting him out of uh, my misery <laughs> uh, for 44.84 with the scope with the glasses I think it's a really a pretty good buy uh, you know, I'm, I do like the uh, cast receiver on like the uh, Crossman 2100, but uh, you know the 2100 uh, doesn't come quite as close in power as this one does with that 12 pumps. So, uh, you know, basically uh, maybe even a little less expensive than the 2100. Uh, shoot BBs or pellets. I prefer to keep uh, just shooting lead pellets with a uh, gun with a rifled steel barrel. And I should m mention the trigger. It is just a single stage. This one I found actually worked kind of smooth. Uh, I was shooting it and my uh, grandkids were over the other day and they were shooting it and everybody had a ball. And I really, really I uh, like the gun if you want a cheap, inexpensive gun to hide in the corner to uh, take out a, you know, a pest squirrel or a rabbit. You know, when you put 12 pumps in this thing, you will take out a rabbit or a squirrel with it. You know, at least you will with a headshot. And uh, it's, I did not attempt more than the 12 pumps. I usually do, but. I did n not exceed the recommended uh, 12 pumps with this thing. I thought it's putting out enough power at 12 pumps where you don't need to uh, stretch the envelope. 
And you might be wondering, what is this? You ever buy a pellet gun and you order some pellets and they come in them, uh, these uh, packing things? I found that these things work perfect to make a can cooler. Here's your typical can cooler. And if you look at the difference, it's the difference between uh, trying to keep warm or swimming suit or snowmobile suit. By using a little bit of Gorilla Glue to glue these things together, I cut one in half and made a bottom for it. And a can fits like a glove in these things, and it keeps drinks cold for a long, long time. So when you order pellets, don't throw these things away. Make yourself a can cooler. It'll really keep your drinks cold during the summer. You can throw away these uh, wimpy little pop mittens that they got now. But anyway, that's my review of the Crossman Legacy 1000. It meets its power claims, and it's a lightweight little rifle that's uh, pretty accurate. And it comes with a usable little scope, and uh, should get years of enjoyment out of it. My name is Kenny Cormandy, and thank you for watching.